back again today with another video with um, the Magnum MER MERE50 replacing it with the uh, the Magnum MERC50 right here from JW Solo USA thanks for watching so if you guys been seeing uh, the previous video I was talking about that guy right there and this one is gonna be taking over and today we're gonna be going to see more features that this device had um, that that one right there if you can see down here it says shore for the show power and here you can see it's a FAVS that's favorites that means you can able to program all your favorites five you're gonna let you program five of them here um, for uh, a quick access so if you know you want to access your favorites so quick you can just push your faves but you have to uh, um, program that so today this is what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be swapping these here as you guys see here I'm gonna bring you up here see the command center again one more time after a long time these guys here the outback is gonna be moving from here to here the classic is gonna go bye bye it's gonna be out and it's taking a break doesn't mean I don't like it I do like it but the thing is I just have big plans and I just want to do something that uh, I want to do testing I'm gonna build all these systems together all right this guy is gonna go out this guy is gonna be taken over here because I have some of the gears for Outback up there which is the the I have the inverter which is the FX uh, 3048 and um, this guy doesn't have a charge uh, inverter so he's gonna go out I have a battery state of charge here if you guys can see and um, you guys can see as I speak today uh, you will see um, whatever is going on here this guy is gonna be taking this guy's position here so I can have space the reason I'm doing that swap because of the um, there's not enough space here for the uh, the PT100 to sit here PT100 is kind of wider but if I look at the corner here I still have a little bit space back there you can see that wood so this guy if this guy move here and this guy out then I can take this one and take the position for this just swap the breakers okay and the magnum is gonna sit right here while I'm gonna be having the outback uh, mate it's gonna be right here turn that one off since uh, the system is not running right now I t turn this one off because I'm running on the on the um, uh, magna sign and this one is gonna be here so I designed this box if you look at this just look um, how I made my uh, uh, PVC box for the uh, Outback and magnum remotes i have a video of this box how I, I designed this pvc so i can put this one so i have the original here to mount this guy right here to mount this guy right here i have the original for it but since i already custom made this ones i know from long or in the uh, for for a long time i know this is what i want to do i'm going to be keeping these machines so i decided to incorporate right there and have those boxes just for them okay and that's what i uh i did and today i already got the the the, the nuts and bolts sorry it's already uh um loosened up so i'm gonna be transitioning right there stay tuned while well, i'm gonna be doing that here at jw solar usa thanks for watching please subscribe like and share as i'm going through this process i want you to bear with me it's gonna be a little bit bumpy <laughs> But uh, I really appreciate you guys' uh, patience and, and love.
and uh, watching my videos. I want to thank everybody uh, with a special shout out to everybody all over Europe, all over the United States, and here, um, the Caribbean, all my international viewers. You guys are all awesome. So, sorry, that noise is from the, uh, the stand right here. I'm trying to center all, position this uh, camera correctly as we gonna go with the transition here. So this is what I'm gonna do. Take all these guys out, as you see. Um, the previous video, I got some shaky video right there. I'm trying not to today. And uh, four of them out. So I'm gonna take this guy out. You can see how this thing is all designed here. It says a remote. So let's go, I'm working in a tight space right here. But well, anyway, I'm in the control room. I'm trying to do this the best I could. It's not like the best space ever. It's out. I'm not gonna shut down my inverter for that, so you guys don't worry about it. It's not like a big deal. So I'm just gonna take this guy back here. You can see like a RJ12 or RJ11, like a telephone jack. So that plugs that, make sure I have to get this latch right there and latch it into that. There you go. You guys you can see, it's already in. You see it powers up. It's gonna tell you, it's looking for all the inverters, looking for the charge controller, and it's telling me to set the time right now. So if I can look what the time is now, it's 19.29. So 1929, let's see. It's correcting, just keep on dialing out this rot rotary all the way. So let's see if it's 1930 now. 1929, so let's go back. It's gonna be, uh, it's a PM. Okay. Uh, let's oh now I just jumped that missed that because I, I just selected the first one and it doesn't take me back for the hour so bear with me I'll go back and correct it as we go here from the command center JW Solar USA maybe we can go back and correct the time most of you guys probably don't even know how to do it or maybe it's your first time or maybe you never had one but you decided you want to decide to go with the magno sign you want to see step by step thing i'll give you the opportunity but i was trying to pull this screw back here and hold this guy but never mind i'll take care of that so if we go back here to the setup here and system so you see that's the time right there so click right there and select the time. So since uh, I like using the military time, so it depends what I want to do. I can choose military time or anything I want to do. So it's 1931. Okay, the minutes 31, as we go, set this one to PM, okay, it's all done. So we can go back to 01B, so the brightness of the screen is at 50%. I want it like I can go 60%, okay? And now it's gonna give me the contrast. If you look at the back here, like I was saying yesterday, you guys can see, sorry for the glare. Oh uh, yeah, I think I can have it this way, it's perfect. I think so, this way. Well, let me position you guys well, correctly. Okay, 
so I can go with the contrast about 50%. You can see if it's 100, you see like ink bleeding on the back of it. So just uh, remember that the uh, settings going to be similar to what uh, the video yesterday. So I put a contrast into that, 50%. And power saving, it says about 15 minutes. So I don't want the power saving to be 15 minutes before the screen goes off. I want to turn this one down. I like to have it on a one minute. It's just a minute. Or I can see that. You can go all the way off. You can turn it off. So I have it this way, maybe two minutes or one minute. I don't want the screen to still um, on for too long. There's a tendency or possibility for you burning your screen. You know, just leave the screen on all the time. Since this uh, device is not as cheap as uh, other people think, but anything with Magnum is not that cheap at all. When you go Magnum or you go high-end machines, it's no more cheap. So we have on one minute. And you guys can see. Here is going to display the Fahrenheit with the temperature display. So we go back here. We want it on Fahrenheit since we are in the, uh, North America. So I deal with Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. So... The amp hours, I can go back here and set it up. Okay. Have it this way, temporal. And go back here. It's talking about the Link PT charge controller setting. Yes. But now I haven't installed the PT100 yes, uh, yet. Sorry. And um, it's not there right now. So I can jump this one. You know, you can go back and say yes or no, okay? So, these are the settings that you have on these um, quick settings here if you want to do um, just on that. So, we be get back here and that's number one that gives you all these settings, okay? So, we can go back to... Number two, inverter. So I put my inverter to search only when it sees about 50, uh, when it sees um, 50 watts of load before it's gonna start doing anything or else it's not doing anything. See that? So the highest is 50 or you can drop it all the way, all the way to, um, you can go all the way off. So it stays on constantly. You don't want that. Unless you want your inverter, even you don't have any load, it's still going to stay on constantly. So I don't want that. I want my inverter to search. Keep searching. You know what I would do? Stay tuned, guys. Uh, let me put the, the screws back here to hold the screen off from uh, moving around. Let's save this one, okay? All right, guys, I'm back again. Uh... This is what's going on here. I already put the screws back. Sorry, I don't want to put on video that. I don't think it's necessary. But anyway, um, this is what we're dealing with here right now. And let's go back to business <clears throat> and complete this one. Oh, um, um, showing you guys the features here. Get get the camera set steady. So here. So I have it on 50, which is, um, it can only, um, the inverters can only turn on when it sees a 50 watt load. Okay. So I have it on 50, I can go drop it down, but 50 is the, um, the number I want to deal with. Okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> Low battery cutoff. The LBCO. That's what it stands for. So the batteries are um, cutting off at a uh, voltage of um, 24.3. So I want to bump it up 24.4, which is the default, or I can put it out to 24.3. At this point, let's check it out because I was, I was going to show you guys something here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can see... And this other um, 
then here you can set the uh, the remote set to connect the hour so it's like 6 a.m. the remote control we connect back and the minutes you can set there to um, do is charging system so you can say disconnect at so so, so time p.m. The same thing again, you set up like the minutes and a.m. or p.m. So here we go. So you set the, 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 the remote to connect. Remember, I set it at 23. 23 um, discharge. Okay. And... Um, the lowest you can cut off. So connect again at 24. Something like that. I'm just giving you guys a uh, illustration here. Then you can go back and set it up. Whatever you want. All the way up. Or all the way down. Okay. So you want it to disconnect. <clears throat> at this uh, thing. Because that's my. That's my float. Okay. That's my float. My batteries, uh, sorry, my absorption. I absorb all the way 29.2. It floats at uh, 20. Hold on, I'll tell you a quick. Um, okay. I float at 27.2. According to um, here, the classic. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I want to get disconnect at this thing and I'll put it this way and go back here. State of charge. You see when you're charging on AC in state of charge, you want it to set at 80%. Then the, the remote will trigger the, uh, if you have your breaker on, we trigger the breaker so you can able to, sorry, it would trigger the inverter, which is here. I will show you. <clears throat> you trigger the inverter to start charging the batteries when the batteries get low at 80%. You can set it on volt. You can set it on a state of charge. You can set it on uh, what? Uh, another function again, volt, state of charge, and something. Oh, I will show you here. So it connects back at this. So it disconnect. It disconnect at hundred percent. So if I want to charge my batteries in a a tough weather condition, I want the thing as soon as I always drop my batteries to eighty percent. No matter what, I'm not trying to. Drop my batteries more than that. I use only 20% of my batteries. Believe it or not, 20% of my batteries I use. So I want if it's a bad weather, I'm not home. This device is going to operate by itself. As soon as it hits to the 100%, it disconnects from the grid and goes back to batteries. And goes back to batteries. As soon as it reaches back to the 80%, and it kicks in again to the grid if the grid is available or else it keeps going till it hits to that 24.4 or 24.3 volt I set there. That's going to be approximately um, around 70%, no, no 50% though. If at 24 volt, that would be a 50%. So I don't want my batteries to ever, ever go down to 50%. Ever. You know, so this is why I want it and I set it this way. And uh, you can able to move this dial to get you all your thing. Set it at 100. So you can see 80% to 100% state of charge and AC. All right. So <clears throat> you want the inverter to be power on all the time. Or you just want to come and push the button to turn it on. So if you turn the breaker on for the uh, main power, then the inverter just kicks in right away instead of pushing the button right here to turn the inverter on, okay? We want that to stay the way it is. You can go off, 
and on so for my preference i will leave it the way it is so let's go back here so we go to number three charge charger parameters here so if i'm charging at a grid <clears throat> for example like i mentioned on the other video you go to your friend's house and you know you know camping down your camper and all of a sudden it's going to give you um a, um extension cord to plug your your rv or whatever you have your uh, inverter with and all of a sudden you, you have to ask him if it's a 15, 20 amp or 30 amp breaker, you don't want to trip. When you are a guest, you don't want to really upset your your, your, your your people that host you, okay? So you got to be careful with that. So you just ask what charger or what amp you get set up for, for your, for your, um, the output. So, so it's a 15, uh, 15 amp. I can just put it on 15, you know. So I can change it to 15%, uh, 15 amp. I can change it to all the way to 60 amps. See that? 60 is the max. So if I plug my inverter into a 15 amp outlet, I just want to keep it to 15 amp. Okay? I don't want to go over that. If I go over that, my main panel breaker or my breaker in my main panel would trip right away. So I keep it this way. So everybody is happy. I know I'm not gonna overload the uh, the uh, the the cable or the breaker. And here is a volt AC drop. I mentioned that too on the other video. If you haven't seen the other one for the ME REC50, they have more of the, uh, the 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 settings there. Okay, these are the basic, and it has more advanced into it. So you want to make sure your generator, if you have a generator, or anytime this inverter is going to see from 80 volt, you can able to, able to drop it down. So anytime you saw a voltage like 60 volts, you want the inverter to turn on, the inverter will turn on, but the default is 80. So this is a good thing about uh, Magnum. Magnum gives you more flexibility for you to do your thing. It depends. It doesn't know. Maybe have those little um, Abo Free generator that uh, produce only less amps, the voltage, this way, or maybe have a machine, a generator that's fluctuating, it's not running good, not fluctuating, that doesn't put a lot of power, then you can start to charge your battery at 80 volts or maybe lower to 60 volts, then you make all your way up there. So that's a good thing, good features about this, where the default is 80, or if your electricity voltage drops, and um, to that thin, um, 80% threshold, your inverter is still going to be doing something, okay? That's the good thing about the uh, the Magnum. So let's go back here. So the custom for the batteries. So you can choose AGM, flooded. Do you see that? Flooded acid batteries, gel, gel, flooded acid, AGM1, AGM2. These are different kind of just AGMC. You see CC, charge controller, uh, charge controller voltage whatever it says CV and see custom I want to custom because I want to customize my settings and this is what you have to call your battery manufacturer to give you all the the settings or the data sheets for your batteries you don't just want to uh, go ahead and start doing things you will regret it greatly trust me you will regret it even if it's a one volt you keep going into your batteries and that's not the threshold for your batteries it's going to destroy them in the time uh, lo uh, in the long run so you don't want that so make sure you contact your manufacturer to give you the specifications for me now you guys can see earlier so i'm gonna my absorb is 29.2 and uh i'm gonna be okay let's see 29.2 you gotta push the set yeah, and he said they, they float at 27.2 for my 24 volt co configuration. And um, the equalizing, which uh, my batteries are not required for equalizing. So there is no way you can just go all the way. So this, I, you can able to set it with the, the absorb. 
uh, voltage at which is 29.2. Sometimes you, some people want to just bump up the batteries to make them a little bit topped off so they can equalize a little bit. It's, a, it's just a 0 0.2 millivolt. It's not going to hurt your batteries. So you bring them to the top end so that I make sure if the other batteries are reading because batteries are not going to ever read the same voltage, especially gel or lithium, oh, sorry, um, AGMs, uh, 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 silet acid, and um, uh, flooded acid. The only batteries I've seen, they're trying to stay mostly the same. Even that is not um, just um, true which is the, the, the lithiums. But the lithiums has a balancing system, the uh, BMS. That's the one that's responsible to make sure each battery that is about to lag and the, the, the uh, battery uh, BMS management system will, will trigger the other um, things so, so that the batteries can all be equal, equilibrium, okay? So that's the thing. But in this case, if you want to do this, you can bump up is, um, I talked to, uh, <clears throat> I talked to a battery manufacturer at one time, I think a couple years or three years ago, and they told me for the equalizing, you can just go, uh, 0 0.01. That's a one millivolt. It's a millivolt. It's good. You can do that. So you just bring the batteries up so they can see they can be, you know, kind of pressurized, be on the same you know balance them a little bit but you don't have to tune that thing very high but because of the magnum here there is no way it goes in twos okay two four six eight ten you see that so if i go all the way this way it's already flooded acid batteries that's a flooded acid battery right there for equalization so my batteries can go like that no that would destroy my battery in no time okay so I want to just keep it. You can keep it this way. Be the same with the the uh, absorb time. But I can able to bump it up just a little bit like this. So it's 2 millivolt. 2 millivolt. So before the system is going to think like, oh, it's equalizing. It's not equalizing. It's just trying to bring the battery a little bit up uh, past the voltage that is uh, set up for the... Uh, the charge controller has his for solar, but this is just for the charging on the grid, okay? Charging on the grid, I'll keep it this way, you know, for me. You don't have to do what I what I do because um, I talked to um, a battery manufacturer before and told me something like that. So look at the timing here. It depends how you want to you wanna, um, charge them, how long the time. So it's an hour. So, or 0.1, just a one minute or one second. I don't think it's even one minute, okay? It's a one minute, okay, it's a minute. This is an hour right here for one minute. Point, 0 0.1, okay? Just because I increase a, a, a two millivolt to get the batteries like all equalized if i take my batteries off anytime you see them they read the same voltage all of them going to be the same okay i'm running the six volt batteries 225 amp hour each so i'll keep it this way don't do what i do consult your battery manufacturer all these settings i'm showing you they suit for my specifications we don't have the same batteries we don't have the same system we're going to be running the same magnum or whatever it is, but don't use my settings. Consult your manufacturer for anything you want to do because these are my settings, okay? We're all different. So I can absorb my batteries for two hours. I can change it to an hour. Sorry, I go too fast here. See, I can go to an hour. The hour is the lowest. So I can set like my charge controller for solar so it can absorb only for hour or I can absorb for an hour because I'm talking, sorry, I mentioned this twice now. Uh, this is for the charge controller if like my Midnight Classic or my Outback, if that's what I want to use for charging because the PT100 is not up here yet. I'm correcting that, paraphrasing right now. So I can put it to an hour or maybe here, two hours if I'm using... Um, the the magnum inverter charger to charge my batteries okay 
if I'm not using the PT100. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. So let's go back here. The max <clears throat> charge. So at 100%, I want my batteries to charge all the way to 100%. Set max charge is 100%. Okay. And it's going to say the max charge timing. So three hours. Or you see, like I was saying earlier. So if we go back here. See, the, that's the absorb time. It done absorbing at two hours. And the max charge, you can reduce. You can do a rapid charge. Like, for example, this is what I understand. You can charge your batteries in three hours. You can charge your batteries below that if that's what you want to charge them for. You can drop this time, maybe just an hour or whatever. Or turn the charger thing, they just charge. Okay? So... You can go. I don't know how how <laughs> how much this thing can go. Okay. It's still going. I don't know. I think it probably is gonna go up to about 24 hours. So I don't have to keep going through that. And you guys can see. I just want to demonstrate that you can charge set the charging instead of going faster or it takes longer to charge the batteries. You can do that. So for right now, like I said, it's just um, showing you guys because the PT100 is not even installed yet. I would say charge my battery max, uh, set max charge time, maybe, let me say, two hours. Okay, let's set it this way. Let's just leave it that way for now. So here, there are three stages here that you want to choose from. It's a float, and you got to go multi, silent. A silent float multi you know you can set it to your own preference okay I always um, I've been setting mine to instead of being just float it can go multi you can go back on the manual you see the reason why I set up that one okay equalizing a reminder I don't I don't I don't have any flood acid batteries so I, I'm not gonna go with that so let's go back here the fourth one um, automatic generator start setup. So, since I don't have that device set yet, it's gonna say, you see, no AGS automatic generator start is not present at the time. So, see, we can click that one because I don't have that device hooked up yet, and they have a network. You know, Magnum has a lot of little gears that you can do. Before going, I'm gonna make sure today I show you my BMK battery monitor kit. Here, so I had an auto to uh, the efficiency, like I mentioned on the other video. Uh, I let the machine know my batteries and select the efficiency automatically. Instead of me, I can go back here. Um, efficiency, I can go 50% and all the way. This one can go all about 90, 93, something like that. 97 or 99. Okay, the old one can go all the way now. I think 97 is stopped. So this one gives you up to about 99% of your state of charge. The efficiency. Okay? So this one go 99. The previous one, if you look at that video, will tell you about 97. So these are all the incre increment they already put into the new um, uh, remote. The re new remote has more. So I put mine into auto. And that's a battery... Bank up and power, you can able to go back here and increase whatever you want all the way. You can just keep going as your battery bank, the bigger the battery bank you have. I don't know how much or what's the highest battery bank on this, but let's keep going, folks. I don't mind uh, showing you guys. I don't know if it can go up to about 2,000 amps. I don't know. Or maybe it's going to be up to 5,000. Who knows? Because the shunt is uh, 500 amp hours. 500 amps the shunts can take so let's go back down and see we can bring back our batteries all right we can just leave it that way for now and go back so go back here to the other thing here so this is for the pt100 uh setup but the pt100 is not yet up see see no pt present at the time so we can go back and skip that when I'm going to do the installation for the PT100, I'll show you guys, definitely. 
So I think that's the last set settings that we have for this. It goes out to number six. So if we go to the meter right here, and you can go DC meter, that's number one. It's just going to show you right there if you push it. And uh, go back here. You see the AC. You see um, unavailable. AC meter. So the timer. See that? So let's go back. So automatic generator start, like I said, we don't have that one present. It's another box, a small device. The battery monitor kit, he said it's ready. I'm going to show you that one pretty soon. Hold on, let me show you. There goes my battery monitor kit right there. This one goes just for my meters right here. You know, those uh, Chinese meters to show you. So they're already off. I turned them off. I'm not using it. And you see the light right there? That's the battery monitor kit right there, management kit that shows you the uh, state of charge. And you can see the connections down to here. Let me show you here. You see, that's the kit. You see, there's a green tag that shows you a network right there. Okay. And uh, so you've seen it. And it says battery state of charge as I speak. We are we are ninety seven percent state of charge right now. Okay, ninety seven state of charge. Okay, back here you can see we're sitting at twenty five point four three um, volt. Okay. That's the voltage right now on the batteries, which the battery monitor kit is showing you from BMK. You see that right there? And it, it says that we are pulling uh, 7.2 amps from the batteries. Okay. It's the same. Um, the, the classic is showing you the same thing right here. It's a 97 and showing you it's pulling a 7.2. See that on the West Bank Junior? So all these things tend to be accurate. Uh, the West Bank Junior is reading the same thing. So that's why I don't need the classic. This is the reason why I don't need the classic up there. I'm going to take the classic up uh, out, sorry, which incorporated the PT100. It's going to sit in there and do its thing. So right now it's telling me since um, the amp hour is in, it says uh, in and out is about 13 amps. Okay. Um now it's showing me here, the last time I reset the thing because I have to pull, turn off the system, uh, it's um, 6,553 amp hours out from the batteries. And now the total um, amp hours out from the battery is uh, 8 kilowatt, 8,000 amp hours. Okay, so say minimum volt DC cut off at 23.15 remember we mentioned that um, earlier okay see the maximum volt DC is a uh, 30.43 um, let's see here a hundred percent SOC state of charge So, these are all the features that you have here. The AC LED meter says not present. We don't have that one. The PT meter, we don't have that hookup yet. You will see all this come to play, the PT meter and all that good stuff. It's not, it's not there. So, folks, this is the... Um, the features, these are the features that uh, you have here on this stuff, which is really, really, really cool. Okay. And um, this video is getting longer, but I want to show you guys the rest of the uh, stuff. It says uh, control, state of charge, connect. See that uh, 
you can able to say connect a DC or uh, sorry AC in disable see that we can we can get it to a state of charge to connect remember when I set up the state of charge at 80% I want to so I can say state of charge connect or I can say uh, time connect if I want to set it on the time remember the settings we had before or volt DC according to the volt if we drop to that thing is connect or automatic connect so these are all the functions so I'm gonna set it like a state of charge connect okay so when it drops to 80% if my breaker is on then it automatically connect and bring the batteries back to 100% it's a multi-stage it's a generator con gen control off I don't have that one available so you see the PT PT is not install if I push this it's not gonna be there so folks these are all the cool stuff and one of the favorite ones you can go and do your thing see right there so you have all the cool stuff all the cool stuff you want so these are the ones you can just use customize the batteries you know all the good stuff so um this will complete our pt um sorry my magnum M E A R C 50 remote panel. I hope this one makes sense to you guys and I hope this one helps somebody. If you find it helpful, please give it a um, thumbs up, um, subscribe and share. And this is the best I can do for you guys. I'll come up back with the next video while the PT100 is already hooked up to the system. While it's going to be up here. And I'm going to be dropping all the classic out because I don't need two Wiss Bank Juniors running into the batteries or whatever I want to do. But I'm going to take that one off because I have a battery management system here. And I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be uh, monitoring my batteries from here and controlling my PT100 as well. And, um, the Outback is going to be there. This is the display for the Outback right here, which is going to be another project coming up, getting the uh, FNDC for the Outback and get all my gears completed. And I'm going to be having the, the load center for the Magnum uh, inverter charger and make sure I get a complete system and the back panel and everything. So these two systems going to be functional right here in the command center, which the Outback power system I have the mate I have the hub right there and I have the other gears for the outback so <clears throat> these are all the uh, the the system running right now from the command center here at the JW Solar USA um, I have my lightning arrestor right there so I, I want to do a change because if you guys are worried about some people curious about the the um, the um, Schneider Electric or Schneider, which is the Xantrex, the XW6048, is still is still sitting here pending, waiting for an action. I got all the gears. I want to get the charge controller for it as well. So I now have three systems. I have a backup, double backup, triple backup. If anything happens to any of this system, I'll launch the other one right away. Okay? But I want to launch the system, three system or two system working simultaneously. When I move out of here because I want to go to a remote place, I can able to do more of my stuff. You know, I want to access maybe one system is going to be powering the garage, my workshop and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be maybe a 24 volt or my 48 volts will run the house or I can run the uh, Xantrek 6048 to run the entire house since it's bigger running air conditioning and running my furnace and all the good stuff. And that's what I plan to do. And um, I'm going to be using probably um, the Magnum for um, uh, different projects. To be maybe the power in the, the workshop or whatever. And just the Outback and all that stuff to power just the yard and security lights and all the cool stuff. So I'm trying to build three systems. Six, three systems working at the same time. But by, by doing so, I want to make sure I have 
um, get the lithium batteries incorporated into this system. Take care, guys. I love you guys all. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share. Give a thumbs up to this video and share it. Bye for now.